Hi guys, still working limits. This is section 9.1 still for math 148. And I wanted to look at question number 35. Nope, 33. <laughs> nope, 35. I don't really care. Let's look at 35. It doesn't really matter to me. If there's some problem that you guys are struggling with, please let me know. I'll happily email you an answer or make a video because if you're struggling with something, I'm sure somebody else is finding that challenging also. So question number 35 says find the limit as x goes to negative 1 of x squared plus 5x plus 6 all divided by x plus 1. So the first thing you can do, I'll do it in red because I did it in red before, but you, you know, it doesn't really matter. So you can plug in x minus, plug in this value, x minus 1, into both of these just to kind of see where you are. So to see kind of where the rational functions lie, plus, minus 1, plus 1 on the bottom, and on top we have minus 1 squared plus 5 times minus 1 plus 6. Okay, so that's 0 divided by 1 minus 5 plus 6. Oh, so that's 7, right? 6, 7 minus 5 is 2. So it's 2 over 0. Hmm, so what this tells us, the nice thing about doing this part first, plugging it in to try, is this tells us that we are, uh, it basically tells us that the limit does not exist. Limit does not exist. D-N-E. I will accept D-N-E for does not exist. Like that. Does not exist. Um, the rule that I am using, it's on page 548. Page 548. And this is what they call the type 2 rational function. Um, because I was just kind of trying to read it to see if there was anything super exciting. Basically, the top one is not zero, and the bottom one is zero, so this means the limit does not exist. So the nice thing about doing this is you're done. Yay! It's always kind of fun when the limit does not exist because you're it's over, right? Problem done. Moving on to the next one. Okay, I also wanted to look at problem number 51 in this problem. To number 51, and this is again section 9.1 is a little weird just because the way they set it up, it's a little odd looking. So you have the limit as x goes to 2 of f of x plus g of x is equal to 5. And I'm pretty sure, let me see if I can actually, I'm flipping to that page. Yeah, they put some brackets around here. So it's like this. Like this equals 5. And second exciting point, the limit as x goes to 2 of g of x is equal to 11. Turn it up to 11. So the th one thing to notice that's pretty important is both of these are the limit as x goes to 2. If this one was x goes to 4 or some other number, we wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. So part A of this question says find the limit as x goes to 2, because that's pretty much where we're stuck right now, of f of x. So you do a little algebra thing and you say, well, this is the limit of as x goes to 2 of f of x plus g of x equals 5, limit of g of x equals 11. So f of x, you're just going to subtract them. That's all. So that's the limit, x goes to 2, of f of x plus g of x minus the limit as x goes to 2 of g of x because these limits, this is equal to, I'm going to be, I'm going to add this stage. This is the limit as x goes to 2 of f of x plus the limit of g of x. I'm going to keep writing x goes to 2, but it's a little tedious. You won't find that also as you do these, this part writing x goes to 2. gets a little old, but whatever. We're not going to be doing limits forever, people. It'll be fine. So these, I'm oh, sorry. They can't, they can't, they would go away, but we have to write this out. That is equal to 5 minus 11 equals negative 6. See? Those are going to cancel, so it's like f of x equals negative 6. Ta-da! So, the answer is the limit of f of x as x goes to 2 equals negative 6. 
Okay, let's look at part B. Bill, question number 51, part B says find the limit as x goes to 2 of f of x squared minus g of x squared. g of x squared. Okay. So this equals the limit as x goes to 2 of, you can think of it as f of x times f of x, right, squared. You don't have to, you could just think of it as f of x squared minus the limit as x goes to 2 of g of x squared, like that. We just said the limit of f of x, that was negative 6, so this part is negative 6 squared minus, and the g of x, the limit of g of x was 11. So that's 11 squared. Calculator, help me. So that's 65, bleh, 36 minus 121 equals negative 85. So that whole limit is negative 85. So to some extent you're distributing the limit. You're saying the limit of this whole thing is like the limit of this part minus the limit of this other part, like that. There you go. And part C, I'll do on another page, wait for it. Part C, question 51, part C, as in Charlie. Here we have the limit as x goes to 2. It's always x goes to 2, otherwise the whole thing breaks down and we don't have enough information. 3 times g of x, f of x minus g of x, so this is essentially equal to, I'm writing this extra stage in here, you can think of it as says 3 times the limit of g of x, x goes to 2. As the math teacher, I feel like I must keep writing x goes to 2, but you guys might ultimately leave that off. It's a little bit sloppy, but I can live with it. And then that's the limit as x goes to 2 of f of x minus the limit as x goes to 2 of g of x, I'll speed it up, equals 3 times 11. 11, where did 11 come from? That's g of x there. All divided by, limit of f, f of x goes to 2 was negative 6, we found that in part a, minus 11. So that turns out to 33 over 17, and the whole thing is negative, because that was negative 17. So negative 33 over 17, which it's always frustrating to me when you get a number like this. It just doesn't seem quite satisfying because it's not a perfect number and it's a little weird looking. But it is, in fact, the answer. So good job, people.